Today, it's Harrison's turn. Lifeguard versus rodent. Harry's and Skeeny spot an illegal trespasser. I see this horse-like creature. It was a dog. It was like a Great Dane. Just come running by me and start bowling kids over. And I'm like, oh, my god. <laughs> And a few seconds later, I see the owner chasing the dog. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come back, you As soon as I got in the vehicle, and he just jams himself under my leg. Skinny has to get out of the buggy and come around to my side, the driver's side, and, and grab the dog. I've got him, I've got him, I've got him. I walk back around and sit him on that side. I've got him, let go of him, I'll walk him back now. <laughs> we both had to wrangle the dog to get it back in the vehicle. The poor owner's just watching the whole time. I really think that for every occasion, you do need a song. And there's no better song than... How much oh, is the dog in the window? Oh, oh. Oh. So much trouble! He was going mad down the plane. He's so beautiful. No, he's so much trouble. If I get a bottle ticket? No, no, he'd be right. You know, when you have a Great Dane slash horse, you know, you need different defensible measures than walking a chihuahua along the promenade or up in the car park. So, you know, maybe having a couple of ropes on that dog or a lasso or something ready to go before it hops out of the car next time. A surfer keeps the woman afloat until Harrison can get her on the board. You're right, you're right. You're going to jump on. You're going to break up. I'll take the duck. Break the duck. You're going to light out. Don't pick him up. You're good. I was gobsmacked. It definitely wasn't the appropriate beach wear to be swimming. It was like some resort where you'd see someone wearing it at a five-star hotel, but you wouldn't wear that swimming down here. Sarai is from Washington, D.C. Ah! Jump on. That was the most challenging rescue I reckon I've done for a while. It's fully clothed, made it that awkward. You're all right. Just make sure you go right up when the flag's next time, OK? Um, I was, like, semi-drowning. <laughs> I went, like, the waves were high, and I went in. I couldn't swim as much as I thought I could back in. And then, yeah, he ended up trying to get me. But I'm a big girl, so it was a little struggle, too. And, yeah been a lifeguard for like seven years back home and I've never experienced that before. What if I didn't know how to like assist him? Sarai doesn't intend to take Harrison's job anytime soon. Like I used to teach swim lessons and I worked at an actual pool but I've never been to a beach so it's completely different. It's more work like usually I thought he could just help me and like we just glide through but no, like, those waves were coming in strong, and, like, we had to, like, force ourselves to go in. Like, I had no idea it was different. Next time Sarai comes down for a swim down at Bondi, go between the flags and maybe find some more appropriate swimming attire. <laughs> there you go, man. Can you believe it? So I grabbed the rescue board. Then I went in, and pretty much is only five metres from the shore. So that I went in, all I could see was his arm waving. He was pretty much his head was under the water. <laughs> We're so close to shore, the next two swells just sort of lifted us back towards where we could stand up. Have a look at where they are, Lifeguards in the tower noticed the rescue. 
but can't identify just who the lifeguard is. Wow. It's Hopper! Stand up, stand up. Stand up. Oh, they were seriously bears for sure. There's what, eight lifeguards, he's meant to be in the office, he's on his training break, and he ends up doing the rescue. So I kind of saw a bit of humour in that. So as soon as you couldn't stand up, yeah, I can't. Yeah, can I, you I, float? Because if uh, you just float, yeah, then that wave would have pushed you back where you could stand. Really, you should go down where the red and yellow flags are. Swim down there. Are you going to go in the swimming pool? Uh, Make sure you stay in the shallow end. <laughs> Absolutely, I feel I will get. I will die. A horrible. I miss my mom, my private, my family. I want to study to continue study. He come and uh, serve me. She, he is a superman for me. <laughs> yeah, Clark, man. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> that was a tough one. <laughs> okay, see ya. See ya. We must have made an emergency because he went in. That's the first rescue I've done out of lockdown. Probably the easiest one I've done nearly in my whole career. My name is Muchi. So the outdoor gym Bondi, uh, the atmosphere in here very active. Everyone is very conscious about their health and fitness, so they work out a lot. So I get motivated when I come here, and it has a beautiful view when you work out. But this gym junkie has a different kind of routine. Just do some, you know, static pole um, moves, just like playing around with the stuff that I have learned uh, throughout my pole journey. So just have fun with it. 24-year-old pole dancing instructor Moochie has a range of moves never seen before at Bondi's outdoor gym. I wear a pair of, you know, thong, g-string in between. It's just my choice of uh, pole wear. The more skin exposure, the easier you can pick on the pole. Why not enjoy um, working out and the view at the same time? Oh, the battery's dead. Does this happen all the time? Because these things are on? I've never had that. We're not out of fuel, are we? No. What are we doing? Uh, mate, this buggy's not starting. Um, like it's got a flat battery. This is the first time you can really be Super Mario. <laughs> As always, Muzzin knows everything. So he, he goes, yeah, I'm all right, I'm Super Mario from Mario Kart. He's sticking his radio into the car battery and thinks it's going to work. Maybe, you know, like the, 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 the cable was a bit loose and he wasn't making the contact. So the 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 the, 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 the um... I actually know how to do it. Oh, I know. It's so, blind. It's so easy. Yeah, I go from us. This should be a simple job. Connect the positive to the positive, the negative to the negative. Muzz was so overconfident that he didn't get this started and be the hero that I thought I'd uh, let him take his chance. So black yeah. goes on on the uh, negative pole and positive. So, red, red pole. Turn it right off. Wait, Rachel, that one's off. Wait, wait, what's that? I just seen this red cable running next to the pole where I touched the, the jumping cable. And I touched the red jumping lead on that pole. And the black one on the other one. What will happen to your hair, Mars, if you get electric? <laughs> You're going to go straight. <laughs> When I saw the spark, I thought, oh, that's great. We, we, we got the electricity running. We on. Oh, they're smoking. Turn it off. Turn it off. Take it off, mate. Bang. What do we got? He's smoking the joint out. Turn it on. 
The boys start saying, Mario, Mario, take it off, take it off. But I was scared. Take it off. And most more coming, and all the, the jumpy leads were, were start to melting. And then, uh oh, I said, no, there is something wrong happening. There's smoke coming out of the buggies. He's jumping around like a cat on a hot tin roof, and we're just all kind of sitting back, watching it unfold. Did that just melt that? Yeah. Oh, my god, it's all happening. Now, Muzz tried to jump start it and caught on fire. So, uh, I'm going to come pick you up. Finally, Whippet radios for the lifeguard he should have called in the first place. Mouse is actually an aeronautical engineer. He fixes planes for a living. So if anyone can jump start a battery, it should be him. Oh, I was good up then. Seen Muzzo, he's very quiet, very sheepish. He has sort of had this question mark written all over his head. Because I saw this one red. red on That's red. English 101, Muzz. Red goes on red. Yes. We need you, Muzz. Yes. We know that Mario is not Super Mario from Mario Brothers. I don't think we'll be letting him too close to the buggies if they're in trouble ever again. <laughs> this isn't the first time lifeguards have extracted a rat from a skate bowl. When Jesse attempted to catch an unwelcome visitor, <laughs> the rat turned the tables on him. Today, it's Harrison's turn. Lifeguard versus rodent. I jumped in thinking I was six foot tall and bulletproof. That quickly changed. <laughs> Thing just charged at me. <laughs> How am I gonna get this now? You know, I'm eating humble pie, got my tail between my legs. And I'm just thinking, oh, there's no way I'm going to get this thing into the box. <laughs> One of the other grommets ran down and put the lid on it for me, so I didn't have to have any close contact with it, and I still look like a hero. Let's call him Frank. Frank? Frank. Bondi rat Frank lives another day, and brave Harrison shows how it's done. You know, where Jesse went wrong is he let his guard down and he didn't get one of the other kids to do it for him. 